um, <laughs> was, I mean, I almost feel like, okay, so we talk about Costello, you know, you talk about Luciano, Vito Genovese, although he, I think he lost his chess match at the end and that hurt his legacy, was probably one of the most powerful mafioso of all time on both sides of the pond. That's just my humble opinion. Obviously, at the end, he fell off. Uh, but give us some of the things that, you know, our viewers can learn about Vito Genovese when they read your book. Obviously, we'll give links to all the different books. But what can we learn about Vito? And I'd like to hear a little bit about the time in Italy when he worked for El Duce. Well, Vito Genovese, you know, he came up at the same time as Costello in New York. Uh, they were both uh, immigrants from Italian uh, families. Yeah. Uh, they really were in the same orbit uh, with Luciano. Uh, and uh, really, at some point, Luciano, I think, looked at both of them as as capable as capable uh, uh, people. Yeah, uh, yeah. And in fact, I think Vito was probably probably had the edge because he was a tougher guy. Yeah. yeah. Vito had no compunction about you know shooting people, killing people. Correct. Uh, but Vito got into trouble with a homicide case in Brooklyn, and he had to leave because he yeah, was indicted. Yeah. So he left and went to Italy. Mm -hmm. And in Italy, uh, and he took a lot of money with him, by the way. Yeah. He he became in tight with the fascist organization. Which I don't get. But anyway, keep going. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't understand either. I think he realized Vito did that uh, you've got to, you know, be with the person in power. You've yeah. got to be yeah. with them. Correct. Uh, there's an image I have in the book. I took it from the, uh, the, the Catch-22 novel nice. where there's an old Italian man in a brothel. Yeah. And yeah. when I saw the film, I was so struck by that scene where the Italian man, he's about 107 years old or something like that in the, in the book. And uh, the American youth say, well, you're such an opportunist. You know, you're with the fascists, you're with the Nazis, you're with the Americans. Don't you have any principles? Yeah. And yeah. The guy says, well, you know, I am basically whoever is in power, I w I'm with. And, uh, you know, and I'm 107 years old. And how old are you going to be on your next birthday? Uh, so this was this was Vito's way, I think, yeah. of, in, of uh, ingratiating himself with whoever had the power. Uh, yeah. He was also tight with the Nazis. Yeah, and, uh, that's and, also uh, then, And then when... You know, the Italians, Mussolini was pushed out, and the Germans were... Got in, with the Americans. Got, in, got in with the Americans. He became a, a translator for the American uh, armed forces government. Uh, so he knew how to play this. But he could do his own rackets at the same time. He thought he was invincible. Whoa. He was doing his black market stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's ultimately led to his downfall in, in Italy uh, yeah. because yeah. he did an investigation, and they got him. They got him on that. And yeah. then they found out he had this case in New York, a murder case. So yeah. they sent him back and they had to face the music. Successfully, I might add. Yeah. Well, he, he was interesting because he gave, he showed up, I don't know if it was his son in law, El Duce's son in law, Mussolini, or or his son, whatever it was. Or Count Siano. Yeah, Count Siano. Yeah, he showed up with like a million dollars cash, was a lot of money now, a lot of money back then. And um, that, that got Mussolini's ear, ears peaked up. And then they figured, you know what? We know he's mafioso, but you know what? He's coming correct. And he's kind of an American guy. So maybe like, you know, like we'll give him a pass. And then they made him a prominent position. And then I, again, I found it funny after the, the war subsided, I think he was doing everything from like arm smuggling to cigarette smuggling. So when he got caught and he also killed that journalist on behalf of Mussolini as well, because I guess he was butthurt, but it's just insane the kind of power he wielded. So why do you think, I don't know if you touch upon this in your books. I didn't read that particular book. But, like, he lost a chess match at the end. I personally think that the Luciana or whoever basically made that case happen. And whether he did it or not, and then, you know, he probably did it, but they made that case happen and put him away so he would die in jail. Essentially losing the chess match. Why do you think he lost the chess match, being kind of a good navigator as he was? Well, I think that um, he desperately wanted to be the, the top dog in the, on the heap. Uh, and he didn't listen to people who told him, you know, it's not a good idea uh, to, to, number one, deal in drugs. 
Yeah. And it's not a good idea to have this Appalachian meeting in Appalachia uh, so soon uh, and in a town where we don't know anybody, we don't control the police. So he was headstrong and he wanted to be the top guy. Yeah. And he was blinded. That blinded him uh, to the potential for, for, for problems. I think also that, uh, you know, there's some feeling that mm-hmm. he was set up, you know, the mobsters were setting him up uh, to take this fall. I'm not convinced that that's so. Okay. Uh, but um, in the end, that meeting in Appalachia was a disaster. Yep. Yeah. You know, not so much for Vito, because Vito really didn't get indicted off of that. Yeah. yeah. Some of the others did. And yeah. that soured them towards him. So, you know, uh, there was 